Aha, there you all are. A very good afternoon to you. It is, of course, Sunday the 15th of January. A very happy new year to those of you who I haven't seen for some time. This is just a very, very short, quick appearance, of course, because it's to let you know that I shall be live tonight, live here on Facebook Live at 10 o'clock sharp when we will have the world's top discussion program with the world's top broadcaster me scotty mcclue if you've never heard of scotty mcclue then get looking up of course capital s c o t t i e that's the scotty and the clue capital m small c capital c l u e it's sunday morning sunday the 15th of january 2017 and it's one o'clock midday so this is a promotion for tonight's program Stuart Walker is watching I see excellent stuff Roddy Martin is watching a very distinguished gentleman there lovely to hear from you Roddy Billy McKee is watching Laura Sargent is watching saying hiya Andy Brooks says good afternoon Scotty and where's the bonnet lol well I lost the bonnet just for this short promotion just to see what you think because everybody says why don't you lose the bonnet but of course now after this we can relax because they'll be shouting why don't you put the bonnet back on uh, as you can see I'm growing through my hair and uh, what we need to do is um, I don't understand why hair grows so thick at the back and not at the top or you could uh, you could swing it round so there you are good afternoon Scotty bonnet please says Jarvis where's your hat says everyone well it's interesting that you should inquire about that because I suspect we could find the hat and I will put it on and then you will be a lot happier so there we are. So keep going. Don't worry, I haven't gone anywhere. I'm digging around here to see if I can find a hat. Well, if I find it, I shall put it on. And then you can all relax, you see. So there you are. Are you ready? Right. In fact, we'll vote on it. Hat or no hat? All right. Bonnet or no bonnet? If you've just joined us and you're wondering who on earth has popped up in front of you in Facebook Live, it's Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster just for you, saying dinky do. Denny McLaughlin's watching. It's not Scotty without the cap, he says. So here we go. Hooray! All sorted. How is that? And uh, I'll pop on my other spectacles so you all feel at home. There we are. And business done. Whew! What an improvement. I hear you all scream at your PCs and your tablets and your phones and your mobile phones. Now, uh, a word to the wise, you haven't done a bad job in getting stuff around. There's over 100,000 people have seen Scotty on Facebook Live. But uh, if you add it up, we've only got a few thousand. It's a few thousand a week. And that's because we need to share, 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 and tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 that Scotty McClue is, of course, live on Facebook Live just for you. Richard Frediani watching. Fantastic. Stuart, no bonnet. The bonnet's on, says James Fowler. There he is, says Owen Murdoch. Big improvement. No, no suit or jacket this morning, Scotty. Willy jumper day. Yes, willy jumper day, Denny. I think uh, that's important. There you are, says Jarvis. That's better. No, says Andy Brooks. I don't know what he means no about. I don't know if he means no, can we have no bonnet? Or if he means no, can we have no without the bonnet? The Pete. So there you are. Um, Nicola Malone McPhail has just shared the video and many others have as well thank you very much i think three another three of you have shared it so keep sharing and sharing and sharing and telling ten and telling ten and telling ten there's one um little video going around with about eight and a half thousand views on it and if we can keep that going around so that everybody on facebook actually knows about this wonderful program just for you independent media live on facebook live scotty mcclue just for you tonight i'd like you to uh, make suggestions uh, keep them polite please as to uh, where Scotty McClure should appear next. So, excellent stuff. The bonnet takes 10 years off you, says Jarvis. Of course it does, Jarvis. And uh, give us a Sunday joke, Scotty. So there we are. Oh, David, for goodness sake. I mean, I don't know any jokes, really. I, although, I heard a good one the other day about um, a lady brought a duck into the vet. And she said, I'm a bit worried about my duck. He's a bit lifeless. And the vet said, well, I'm not surprised he's lifeless because he is actually dead. She said, I don't believe you. She said, he does sit very, very still for long periods. So he said, I'll go and get my Labrador dog 
because he knows all about ducks, and uh, you know he'll get a reaction. So in came a big black Labrador dog, beautiful big Labrador, sniff, 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 round the duck, sniff, 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 you know, and uh, he looks up at the vet and sort of just drew his eyes and said, you know, and uh, out he went, so the vet uh, sent the lab out, and uh, in came the cat, the vet's cat, he said, the cat will soon show you if there's any life in this duck, and the cat wandered all over the duck, had a really good look at it from tip to tail, and he said, no, no, out went the cat, and the vet said, that will be £150, please, and she said, just for telling me the duck's dead, he said, no, you've got to remember we've had the lab report and the cat scan. I thought you'd like that. There you are. Will you be using Skype, says Kamala Tees. Yes, absolutely. Carol McNamara there. What are you discussing tonight? Lots of things, Carol, but we've got to stay off Scottish independence a wee bit uh, simply because people are listening all over the world with a global programme. People in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, America, Madagascar, Tasmania, Russia, China, Japan, the Arctic, the Antarctic, Australia, New Zealand, uh, and the Tierra del Fuego, of course. What a place that is. So there we are. Brilliant, says Charles McLachlan. You should be on stage, Scotty. <laughs> Sweeping it. Oh, bad joke, Denny. Uh, very poor taste, Denny. Very poor taste. But mind you, having said that, I've worked in the theatre, as you know, for many years. And I am not averse to sweeping up. That is really not a problem because in the theatre, if you can make a cup of tea or sew on a button, you're just as important as the director and the actors. Because if the janitor doesn't open the door, nobody gets on stage. Uh, David Lemire says, lol, absolutely lol to you, David. No problem at all. No to independent Scotty, says Alan Miller. Alan, don't be silly remember i'm not coming at it from a political point of view at all i couldn't give two about the political setup from an economic point of view you know the world cannot move forward until scotland is under its own management running the show because westminster's acting as a ball and chain running away with all our money at the moment so there you are we're subsidizing the whole of the uk that's why westminster does not want scotland to leave as i say i am no great nationalist or separatist or any of these things at all but i am an economist and i do think that we need to be looking at the economy side of things and saying we would do an awful lot better if we didn't have the ball and chain and also this brexit thing you know a lot of the scots don't want to be coming out of europe it's small thinking uh we are golfing this morning sir jarvis mark critton says good afternoon scotty boy good afternoon to you mark an absolute top man and thank you for all your thoughtfulness and your kindness and your generosity very much appreciated i'm not being silly scotty the snp has failed scotland well even if you believed that look what happened to labor for not backing independence they marched into the wilderness and they've learned nothing and they will remain in the wilderness 56 mps at westminster the snp Fantastic stuff, you know, so there you are. Well said, Scotty, and independence is Jim Coyle. Absolutely, Jim, it makes complete and utter sense. Certainly to the Scots. Shout out, you fab chaps, says Laura Doddy. Dinky do, Laura. How are you, says Daryl McMillan. Very well, Daryl, and thank you for asking. Scotty, I'm not averse to independence, but I'm averse to the SNP and its rhetoric. Stuart, that's fine, but at the moment, the Scottish Conservatives, the Scottish Liberals, or Scottish Lib Dems, and the um, Scottish Labour Party are not backing independence. One wonders what they're actually doing in the Scottish Parliament. I was watching the BBC's programme this morning, Sunday Politics Scotland, with Gordon Boer. Very, very well done. He's very, very good. But again, Labour were more or less just trotting out the same stuff, and until they actually think, hold on, why are we in the wilderness? Who put us here? And they think, ourselves. Scotty, that way, if it stands alone, we vote SNP. We may as well vote Tory, as they'll get back in if we do. The Tories won't get back in in Scotland, although if you listen to Scotty McClue talking to Willie from several years ago, Willie about independence, then uh, it's quite clear, Scotty, you're a nationalist, says Alan Miller. No, it's not clear at all, Alan. I am apolitical. I am just telling you good common sense. I'm a man you should be listening to, and I did contact the uh, Yes movement and say, 
you know, why don't you uh, have a word with me? Why don't we have a cup of coffee and a chat? And I never heard any more back. So there we are. So I'm afraid, uh, I'm not saying that's why Scotland's not independent now, but if you do want to hear Scotty McClue talking about independence, go on to YouTube and put in Scotty McClue on Scottish independence and have a listen. Spot on, Scotty, says Willie Cruikshank. Catch up the night, says Thomas Dreghorn. Absolutely. Afternoon, Scotty, says Esther Hart. Sorry, Scotty, and I know it's not you, but Liber failed Scotland. Yes, of course, all these things have failed Scotland. So if that's the case, let's, let's then get on and change it. All this talk, same with the NHS, they're talking, yes, we need to get together and have a conference. Have one, sort it out, get it sorted. So there you go, that's what I'm saying. You know, I mean, I can't understand. It's all very well politicians talking about these things, but they need to get on and say, this is what's happening. Even if you said to Westminster, look, we feel that uh, the blame for the whole Scottish independence movement lies firmly and squarely at your door and because of your attitude of superiority, which is one you don't have because Scotland's holding all the cards, we've got the resources. And, uh, you know, if you actually submit, uh, you know, let's do it that way. Let's, let's try it for five years under new manage. There's only one alternative to independence for Scotland, and that would be running the UK from Holyrood with perhaps Ms Sturgeon or whoever is around at the time. Are the SNP becoming the new Labour, taking things for granted and being a bit of a big brother knows best, says Jarvis? Well, Jarvis, I think that there was a while you couldn't have got a paper, a cigarette card between uh, Labour and um, SNP. That's why they detested each other so much. But, uh, you know, Labour's no threat to the SNP. I can tell you that right now. If we're told we voted for independence, we'd still be out of the EU. So people did not find no matter what we did still where says Denny. Don't quite understand all that, Denny. I have to have another read of that. Martin Monaghan is on. Hi, Scotty. Happy Sunday. That's much better, says Gavin McCoy. Gavin, lovely to hear from you. I thoroughly enjoy our exchanges. I hope you got your big mention from Scotty McClue's New Year's Night program. When I put on the black tie, we made it a black tie event, especially for you on the off chance that you may make your presence felt and turn up. That would have been wonderful. So there we are. Uh, I'm not against Scotland going independent, but as a Welshman, I'm sick of watching the SNP use it as a bargaining chip all the time. Probably it's me being a bit glass half empty, says Thomas Howells down in Wales there. Now, what I would say to you, Tom, Thomas, uh, Thomas, a lovely name, Thomas. What I would say to you, Thomas, is uh, it's only because of the pressure that's put on the SNP by Westminster to say, we will not listen to you, you will not be listened to, blah, 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 ah, all that sort of stuff. So there you go. The Union's done nothing for Scotland. Alan and Jarvis, SNP, are picking up the mess that the Unionist Party made of Scotland over the years. Yes, I mean, I think there was a while that I was a staunch Unionist because that was, at the time, good for Scotland. It's not good for Scotland anymore. So it needs to be sorted out. And why have we even got unionist parties in a Scottish parliament? It's, it's laughable. They're wooden horses. That's what they are. They are the wooden horse. Any selection boxes left over from Christmas, Scotty? If yes, could you pass them on? There's one with a finger fudge still to be gobbled up, I think, Jarvis. Uh, after Tuesday's PM's hard Brexit speech, Indy 2 will be proposed for September, says Martin Monaghan. Yes, I thought you were weakening on us last week, Martin, but in actual fact, yes, it will guarantee that there will be Indy Ref 2. And it comes from the people of Scotland. If you remember, just before, um, the outgoing Prime Minister had actually said, well, that's for the people of Scotland to decide. You know, you'll hear all this. And then suddenly they thought, hang on a minute, this is a gore. We need to get up there and put a stop to it. Um, after Tuesday's PM's hard Brexit, yes, be proposed for September. I think it may well be, but there we are. Anyway, if you've just joined us and you're wondering what on earth's going on, it's me, Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, here with you saying dinky do live on Facebook Live. Tell everybody about this right now. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. Say, are you listening to Scotty McClue? Put it out to all your friends and contacts. Let's try and experience 
experiment and see how high we can get an audience up right now. So every single person who can see me right now on this promotional video, can you actually share it with all your people, right? Share it with all your people and uh, see what happens. I agree, says David Steele. Can you Skype, says Jarvis Butler. I can Skype, I can dance, I can dab, I can ride a bicycle. And uh, yes, of course, we'll be Skyping tonight, Jarvis. A lot of the mess of Scotland's been caused by the SNP freezing council tax and starving councils of millions of pounds to sustain much needed services. Well, of course, that does come from the central budget, doesn't it? So there you are. So that's coming up from the south. Uh, Kamala Seas and 13 others have just shared the video. Uh, we appreciate that. But also, um, can you type in, actually type in and say, are you watching Scotty McClue? And my name will come up live, Scotty McClue. Are you watching Scotty McClue live on Facebook Live, the new, right now? Um, and just see what we can get the audience up to. Ha ha, says Jarvis Butler. Happy Sunday, Scotty, says Carl Morris. Happy Sunday to you, Carl. I hope all is well with you. Do you really think Parliament will let Scotland go after breakfast? Bre after breakfast? No, no, after Brex Brexit. For some reason, I do not think so. Denny, Denny McLaughlin, let me tell you this. Westminster will never, ever happily let Scotland go because it is a cash cow, right? £40 billion a year pours in from your pockets into Westminster so that it can be squandered as the government think fit. So I'm just telling you that now so that you know that. Have you got that? Very, very important because you get the dafties on social media saying things like, uh, Oh, no, we, we, we should let Scotland go because we're, we're subsidising it. Rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. Um, so, no, Westminster will not let Scotland go in a hurry. They sort of probably maybe had a wee toy with the idea when the oil prices absolutely plummeted, but all's on its way back up. And Scotland, of course, would be a very, 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 very wealthy company, provided, like any business, it was run Properly. And I was proposing last week, would Scotland benefit from a slightly right of centre um, party who were pro the monarchy? I mean, don't ever, ever, ever mess with the monarchy. If you do that, that was the mistake that the nationalist movement made in the 1950s, talking about Elizabeth I and Elizabeth II and all that kind of thing. And if you mess with the monarchy, which I don't want to call the monarchy a sideshow, because it's not, but it is. Compared to independence, it's a sideshow. And you keep the monarch. There's no connection between 1707 and 1603. So all the dafties in the independence movement who are going, ha, ah, be great to have a republic. No, it wouldn't. That's all been tried. So you leave the monarchy alone. It's doing absolutely no harm. It costs us 52 pence a year. It brings in billions to the British economy. So, you know, slagging off members of the royal family, unacceptable. So there you are. Tremendous. So leave them alone. Alan, you're dreaming, mate. SNP have helped the Scottish people more than what Westminster's ever done. Well, if you ask yourself, which politician do you trust the most? Do you trust Theresa May or do you trust Nicola Sturgeon to run your country? You know, ask yourself questions like that. Uh, I've invited 10, Scotty, says Stuart Walker. Thank you, Stuart Walker. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. We don't need Westmasters, says Daryl McMillan. Scottish people voted to stay in the UK, so why continue spouting on about independence rather than sorting out what matters most to people, education, health and politics? Alan, the Scottish people did not vote to stay in the UK. Some of the Scottish people voted to stay in the UK, but it was a very close run thing. There was 5% in it. So regardless of whether you're a unionist, Put your old-fashioned prejudices aside and say, hang on, this is a new world. The world has changed to an extent. But people used to say to me, as Scotty McClure, you're not in the room because the world's changed. I say, no, the world hasn't changed that much. There's always room for talk radio. Uh, we're down on one knee when you were proposing, uh, says Jarvis. Thank you, Jarvis. No, 
says Jarvis. Uh, the Scottish people were lied to during the vote, says David Steele. Yes, I think there was a huge element of pro-unionist media. You're bound to get that. It's all in the name. The clue is in the name. Uh, so have a look at that pro-unionist media in terms of newspapers and broadcasting. So Scotland does need its own broadcasting and it should be regulated in Scotland. So there should be a Scottish government department uh, that takes on all the broadcasting and the media side of things. And uh, it should be regulated in Scotland. That's what I would say. But you do need a Scottish media. You think about it a few years ago. All your independent radio in Scotland was owned by Scots and run by Scots. Your television stations owned in Scots and run by Scots. Your newspapers were owned by Scots and run by Scots. Uh, so there you go. And then that's all changed now. And you've got ownership of the Scottish media. The bulk of it is owned by uh, non-doms. It's owned abroad. Uh, so there you go. Um, Alan Miller, 55% voted. Yes, 55% Alan. So just over half. That's what I said to you. There were 5% in it. And if you take away, I mean, perhaps at Indiref 2, a lot of the unionist media should have to declare an interest or butt out. And why should it be a political thing? Why don't we just make it economic and have it straight? So a lot of your parties butt out as well. Why should you actually say we're going to hand it over to the politicians? We're going to hand all of your country over to the politicians. No, no, no. Let's hear from the economists. Scotty, I could listen to you all day, says Jarvis. Thank you, Jarvis. I'm sure I could listen to you all day. Um, the SNP lied about the oil prices being £110 a barrel. No, Alan. L listen, stop trying to pick holes in something that happened two years ago. Look at the facts. You had an ex-prime minister came up and told people a lot of nonsense about uh, they would lose their pensions if they voted yes and all that frightened the oldies and why would you go bullying and frightening the oldies the snp is about looking after our elder citizens our senior citizens say hello to joan scotty it's a beautiful day says jim robin dinky do joan i hope you're enjoying yourself i doubt it says jarvis butler hello scotty says Evan Thompson. If Russia can interfere with voting in the USA, think about who would interfere with voting in the UK. I think it's all corrupted. Well, Esther, we don't know all about that. I mean, there's, uh, you know, you've got to uh, hope that the UK democracy um, was and certainly is one of the finest in the world. You've got to hope for that, Esther, and you've got to have a sense of hope. And our um, head of state, the Queen, the monarchy, the royal family, they give us all a sense of hope, a sense of continuity. The Queen goes on. She's seen several prime ministers. How many is it she's had? Is it 16 or 17 of them? We'd have to work it all out and, um, and, and count them all up. You can count them all up. Uh, so there we are. So, I mean, I think that obviously, Somebody's always trying to eat your lunch. People are, uh, you know, hanging around. I mean, when I was in business, you know, I lost money to a guy. One bad decision. He was a very, very bad person. And, um, you know, that was the way the cookie actually crumbled on that occasion. So, uh, you know, you've got to have a sense of hope. You've got to have a sense of trust. But you've got to be careful who you trust. But as I say, in all my years, I've met one bad person. Now, that's not bad, is it? Um, that's good. <laughs> right. Well, I do hope, says Esther. And she says, because good for you, Esther. What about the postal votes, Scotty? Says Willie. Well, of course, I think it'd be better if people turned up and voted. But perhaps we should change the question. You know, that might be an idea. Uh, terrible, says Jarvis. Can I get a wee tune from your box, says Jim Stephen Gibb. People love the box. I don't understand uh, what the big uh, attraction is. It's just a wee, lovely wee accordion. And people like a wee tune on the box. There it's there. Very nice. Um... <laughs>
go. Reaching for you. Uh, but Butler's giving it a squeeze. That's excellent. Uh, wonderful joining us. Woohoo! Sir Jarvis. 13 Prime Ministers, Scotty. Is it 13, Denny? Is that right? Who do we have? Churchill was the Queen's first Prime Minister. And then who followed Churchill was it Macmillan? No, sorry, it was Eden. So that's two. And then uh, Macmillan, three. Alec Douglas Hume was four. Uh, who was after Alec Douglas Hume? Wilson was five. Um, so there you go. And uh, Wilson was in twice, wasn't he? So that's six. And then you had uh, Callahan, or you had Heath. Seven, Callahan, eight. Um, who was after Callahan? Um, who did we have after uh, Mr. Callahan? After James Callahan, who came in? Do we remember? Was that uh, Wilson again? And then Thatcher, nine. Um, and John Major, ten. And um, who was after John Major? Uh, John Major was that when Blair took over? Eleven. And then uh, after Blair was Brown, 12. And after Brown was uh, Cameron, is that right? 13. And then uh, Theresa May, 14. So two were in twice, was that right? Who was in twice? Uh, that's what you need to tell us. Right. Um, so we've got that. Yes, they are, they're all coming up here. Everybody's putting there. This is fantastic. Uh, a round of applause as Jim Stephen Gibb. I thank you, sir. Um, uh, Jim Stephen Gibb, I hope you're practicing Glen Colour Castle. Um, da dee hum da dee 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 dum dee 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 Callow Castle, excellent stuff. Time for a sheer Scotty. Yes, uh, Wilson and Thatcher, if everybody can share what they are seeing right now, we'll see them get the audience up. And uh, what's this new TV program called Scott Squad, says Louis Faber. I don't know, Louis. And uh, Scotty, do you fancy a day's campaigning for Yes 2 in Glasgow province? says Martin Monaghan. Oh, Martin, I think my campaigning days are probably past. I've done all these things, my dear fellow, done stacks and stacks of them over the years. I can go right away back um, to all the early days uh, of the, uh, the the Scottish ministers. Dinky-doo, says Kevin Byer. It's called The Nat Show, says Alan Miller. No, Alan, it's not The Nat Show. It's just the common sense show. And instead of um, nitpicking, Alan, what you need to do is ask yourself what your problem is. Ask yourself why you don't want to support your country. And uh, come on and tell us. Uh, we'll certainly listen. Uh, Blair was the worst Prime Minister ever, says Evan Thompson. Well, that's opinion, uh, Evan, you know. Would you ever share your last roller with me, Scotty? I doubt it. Of course I would. I have shared my last roll with people, Jarvis. So there you go. And um, what else have we got on here? Isn't it lovely that if you have an opinion on anything, everybody wants to start knocking, oh, this is a natural, because we're actually just talking common sense. Uh, have a listen to it. You'll hear me talking to John Gaunt on... Um, the uh, on, on independence put it into youtube guys if you can all get on to scotty mcclure's youtube channel that would be fantastic louis faber says will you be seeing train spotting too when it comes out to cinemas on the 27th of january oh i think so we certainly saw train spotting one my country is the uk well you see the uk is not a country evan britain is not a country there is no such country as the united kingdom so there's no uh, point in saying that you're a UK person or even a UKIPper. Uh, you know, there's no point in saying that you are British. It just means you're from Scotland, England, Northern Ireland or Wales or from one of the uh, former British colonies or Crown Protectorates. So there you are. So, you know, your country is Scotland. And it just depends if you want Scotland to be part of a United Kingdom, part of Britain 
you know, but there is no country called Britain and there is no country called the United Kingdom. So get that together for a start. That's like, uh, you know, if you live in um, an American state, you know, if you live in uh, one of the American states, you live in Texas and, uh, you, you know, you say, I am uh, an American. You know, one can understand that because there's actually such a country as America, but there's no such country as Britain. Totally, says Jarvis. Uh, that's a country. You're talking out of garbage, says Alan Miller. What are you on about, Alan? I never, ever talk garbage. Never have done. Never will do. You'll only get the facts from Scotty McClue. Right? The program that tells the truth. Stronger together, better forever, as his own murder. Well, in actual fact, no, we're not stronger together. Scotland is most certainly not stronger as part of the UK. Uh, the passport says UK. Yes, of course it does, Evan. That's not a country. That's the United Kingdom. You will also have a passport that says Europe, but it doesn't mean it's France or Germany or Spain or Belgium. It just says Europe. You know, you're a European citizen. You're a citizen of the United Kingdom. So you obviously come from a country that's either Scotland, England, Northern Ireland or Wales. So there you are. Going to get a wee shout out for Antonio. Cheers, Scotty, says Jim Stephen. Of course you can. He <laughs> says um, Jarvis. So no, no. Owen, Scotland is certainly not better together or stronger together or any of these things. Uh, you know, it uh, it would make a fantastic country just getting on with it. Whether or not the SNP are the party to run it when it becomes independent, that's uh, entirely. But from an economic point of view, Scotland has got a ball and chain on at the moment. What's the point of being hell-bent and voting for the answer you want? I mean, surely the whole point of our country is based on democracy. Scotland voted to stay in the UK and the UK voted to leave. Uh, see more, says Thomas Howells. Let's just see what Thomas is saying. Down in Wales there. Leave the EU. Why can we not all accept that vote? I mean, just like you said, it's common sense. Well, the only thing about the EU referendum that I would say, Thomas, is you could say that individuals misconstrued the truth. So we were voting on a lie which should, in theory, null and void the EU referendum and then they should have had the truth all prepared. So it's all been a huge shock, the fact that people actually voted leave and the fact that now they've got to try and disentangle the United Kingdom from Europe. And why? For what? You know, that's what we've got to ask. Uh, the UK is treated internationally as a functioning country on official terms. Uh, by this, I mean the UK is represented as a country in the UN, etc. Well, it's actually Britain that's represented in the UN, but it's the same idea. It's several countries. What you've got is a spokesperson for your country. So there you are. Uh, although the United Kingdom is a sovereign state, is a country. No, it's not, Alan. England, Scotland, Wales, and to a lesser degree, Northern Ireland are also regarded as countries. Though they're not sovereign states, yes, they are sovereign states. You see, all the stuff about Scotland being independent, Scotland is a sovereign state. And, uh, you know, it's it's got a head of state. It's got Her Majesty the Queen. And all this talk about Scotland being independent, what would it be like? Scotland was independent for thousands of years. It only didn't become independent 310 years ago. So there you are. So Scotland is used to being an independent country and an independent entity. That's part of the, prog uh, the problem. And what it's saying is the programme that uh, we've got ahead for Scotland isn't necessarily the best thing for Scotland. So that's what we do need. And I've said this time and time and time again, and I do hope politicians and broadcasters are listening to me right now. What we do need is not only our own broadcasting, but we need a massive Scotty McClue national phone-in programme. A programme like this, where we can discuss it face to face. If you'd had a national phone-in on radio or television, it doesn't matter, you could put it on a television station at night, um, then you would have got the opinion of the people and we could have made our judgment and then we would have known how to vote. 
I could quite happily have explained to everybody all about the EU, all about Brexit, all about an independent Scotland. I could have explained all that to them in real terms and people could then have made an informed decision. So there you are, rather than feeling about in the dark. Yeah, bring back the Bruce heritage. Robert the Bruce, very good. Have you got Tarbert in Argyll? You'll see the Bruce heritage because that's where he was on the run, Robert the Bruce. And a goat came and let him suckle her. And he said, after that, goats must roam free throughout the land. I'll become king of Scotland if yous all want, says Jarvis Butler. Oh, we grammatical feel there, Jarvis, yous. Um, what's the point when you're only one-sided, says Alan Miller? I'm not one-sided, Alan. I've looked at every single side of it. I am multi, multi, multi-sided and would always listen. But the conclusion will be that Scotland's not in the best place under Westminster's armpit, under Westminster's oxter. So there you go. Uh, push off, Lizzie, says Jarvis Butler. I don't know who that is. Elizabeth Cairns. Hi, Scotty. Good to hear from you again. I don't think he's referring to you, Elizabeth. I like to feel about in the dark, Scotty, says Evan Thompson. Well, your private life's your own, Evan. That's nothing to do with the rest of us. So there you go. But it will save on your electricity bills, I'm quite sure. Please, I need this to be explained to me. Scotland voted by 5% in favour of staying apart from the UK. So why have another vote? Surely all this does is shows generations to come that you can cry and, and cry. No, well, Thomas, let me explain to you. What happened during the uh, referendum was that Westminster sent a former prime minister up. And that former prime minister, um, you know, frightened people into not voting to leave and things like that and then after that Scottish Labour were absolutely cast out into the wilderness so what that speech did was lead to the uh, casting into the wilderness of the Scottish Labour Party and they'll probably never ever recover and they were a very very strong force to be reckoned with but they're going to stay in the wilderness until they back independence for Scotland. Had Scottish Labour backed independence for Scotland they'd probably have been in power now. An interesting thought. So when Ms Dugdale is talking to Mr Corbyn right and uh, you know I can see where Mr Corbyn's coming from I can see why they're very frightened of Mr Corbyn because he's very very good as a politician he knows what he's talking about so there you go and again I'm no Labourite but I'm just telling you that uh, so what happened Thomas we'd also got a very pro-unionist media who it appeared it was pretty obvious were not playing fair I mean there was one editor actually uh, edited a piece with the first minister of Scotland at the time Alex Salmond so it just didn't make the sense as to what had actually happened and I was sitting at my computer and um, I was I had the uh, news on and I could hear the difference in the edit and I thought that is disgraceful that's absolutely disgraceful so there's no one side in this about me Alan I'm just giving you the facts um, it's quite clear from how you talk I take it SNP sponsor you know I have nothing to do with the SNP uh, so there you are I have, I have spoken at a dinner uh, and that's about it so there you go I have absolutely nothing to do with the SNP and nobody sponsors me more's the pity if you'd like to make a contribution to Scotty McClue go on to www.scotty-mcclue.com and you'll see PayPal there and um, you can send something in a fiver or a tenner or a quid or 50 grand or a million pounds whatever you've got the Scottish deficit's around 15 billion how can you expect Scotland to survive on its own without UK Louis again another myth if there was a black hole remember two things one Westminster would have dropped Scotland like a hot tatty and we'd be gone we'd be uh, guddling about on our own by now uh, if there was a deficit like that and remember all we'd need to do is withhold the Westminster levy cancel the um, the uh, Barnett formula and withhold the levy and take the 15 billion out of the 40 billion that we would be sending to Westminster and say that's just to fill our black hole so there you are we haven't got it we're going to fill our black hole pay off our debts and we'll send you anything that's left for the moment pro tem until independence so there you are uh, agree Louise 
We mean says Scottish deficit's 15 billion. Yes, so there you are. So you're 15 billion, and that deficit will disappear overnight as the. Um, sorry about the jumping about there. Cameraman's got a shaky hand. That will disappear um, overnight as the oil prices shoot back up again. Uh, so there you are. Never speak with your mouth full and make sure you chew before you swallow. How your mother's taught you well, Jarvis. Very, very good stuff. The £15 billion figure is a jazz figure, independent. What are you going against this? No, the jazz figures are based on Scotland being part of the United Kingdom. So you need to get that into your head. So these are actually UK figures. So Scotland needs to uh, uh, come out with the figures. So these are the figures taking into account UK. These are not taking into account an independent Scotland. I suppose with everything taken into account, it's all opinion based. I respect your thoughts. I don't agree with them. Well, no, this is not opinion. This is fact. So if I said to you, let me give you a quick um, one of fact and opinion. If I said to you, Winston Churchill was a great prime minister, true or false, fact or opinion, in actual fact, some of you might like to think it's fact, but it is only opinion, and a lot of people would disagree with it. Um, if I told you Winston Churchill was deceased, was dead, then uh, that's fact. Okay, there's no arguing with that. So it's not really opinion, it's actually a fact. Uh, there was my grandmother actually, says Jarvis, oh, your grandmother's taught you well. If the oil, if the oil price goes up, Scotty, well, Evan, the oil price is going up now as we speak, it's clambering. Uh, that was only a blip in the oil market, and it's interesting that the yes vote, um, the, uh, the the no vote when it should have been a yes vote, uh, brought down the oil price plummeting. So there you are. When people thought Scotland's not going to be independent, boom, the market fell out of oil and gas. The deficit was created by the Westminster government. The Scottish government works within a fixed budget, says George McBean. You are, of course, correct, George. Excellent. So... Scotland are only relying on oil. That's all we have to go on in whiskey and smoked salmon. No, Louis, there's plenty of things. There's huge exports of engineering from Scotland. So a tremendous amount of that. We've still got some of our engineers and we're exporting people. We've got the health service, what have you. Um, there's so much. We've got water, we've got whiskey, we've got shortbread, we've got uh, oil, we've got gas, we've got natural resources. So there's so many things that Scotland can be doing for the world. Have a look at Norway and look at its economy and you will get an idea as to how a small country can manage. Uh, and how is it not opinion based? Everyone takes information presented to them in different ways. No, no, I only take the facts, Thomas, and I will look at everything. I will look at the facts coming from one side. I will look at the facts coming from the other side. I will read every newspaper. I will look at every television program. I will go on social media. And then I will get to the bottom of it. I will do the research. And I'll say, well, that is definitely fact. Uh, time for a share, Scotty. Yes, this was only for a minute, folks. I just popped up for a quick minute but if you want to do a share 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 stand proud says Jarvis we do I'm a fully qualified engineer I had to go down south to England because engineering jobs in Scotland was so bleak well that's perhaps because stuff has been going south for many many years we need to bring it back we need to say let's bring everything back to Scotland but what happened after the Union there was asset stripping of Scotland going on and stuff has been taken down south so you would very likely have to go south for a job but in Scotland we need our engineers um, so there you go Louis so welcome I say right can everybody share Scotty McClue just for you live on Facebook live a wee tune before you go says Jim no 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 plenty of tunes plenty of tunes Jim and uh, everybody's enjoyed that uh, yes, but you'll vote with a solution that best suits your personal needs. No, 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 no. I will vote for what suits the future of Scotland. I am a curator. I'm not interested in my personal needs. I never have. Otherwise, I would be very wealthy financially and I would be holding down one of the top jobs in the country. So there you are. So I have never, ever pushed myself forward stabbed anybody in the back voted for my personal needs my personal needs are very 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 simple 
I was talking to somebody recently and they said, we can't understand, Scotty, how you are not the richest person in show business. And uh, the truth is, I'm one of the richest people in the world. I just don't have a lot of money. There you are. But uh, what life balance, all that. So, no, I wouldn't be uh, uh, different. You're probably lying, says Thomas. Howell. No, Thomas, you're not funny. I'm going to call you Doubting Thomas. Yes, you're like the man that didn't believe Jesus was alive even when he was asked to put his fingers in the holes in the man's side caused by his crucifixion. So there you are. So that's what I'll call you, Thomas. Doubting Thomas. I'm not talking about you personally. I'm talking about company owners. Yes, I mean, I think there's a tremendous amount of greed out there, unprecedented greed. That's why we're in the problem, because there's several trillion pounds are offshore because governments haven't said, no, no, if you make your money from this country, you account in this country pay it in pay your tax so there you go and uh, that's what they need to do there's too much of this um, um companies registering abroad and buying up british heritable property and what have you uh, so there we are um who else have we got socialism has never worked anywhere in the world says so well yes i think socialism actually has what to a greater or lesser extent because We've always had socialism with a small s, particularly in Scotland. We've always had socialism, and Buns was a, a perfect product of that. The man's the man for all that. The rank is but the guinea stamp. The man's the goud, the gold, for all that. So I would say that socialism um, does work, but it's got to be um, also financed and propped up in some sort of way but if you had pure socialism i'm sure you could feed the five thousand that was what the feeding of the five thousand was the five loaves and two fishes between five thousand people but if everybody had a tiny piece of something and then others said hold on a minute i've brought a wee packed lunch here as well so i'll share that with you i've got a cucumber here you could have a piece of cucumber you can't have it all but you could have a piece of cucumber um, you have to add my friend Raymond Scotty, says Denny McLaughlin. I will do that, Denny, with great pleasure. Anyway, as I say, I popped up for five minutes. I've been on for about 45 minutes, so time to push off. I'll see you all tonight, anyway, at 10 o'clock sharp. Now, be there or be square. And make sure you spend the afternoon on social media. Google+, Plus, Twitter facebook follow scotty mcclue on facebook do it right now actually follow scotty mcclue on facebook make a decision um to uh, donate at www.scotty-mcclue.com paypal it's there you'll get a receipt it's all the uh, hunky-dory stuff and that helps to go towards the program and um all i would say to you is dinky do there's lots and lots of things we can discuss but campaign for the return of scotty mcclure to your radio and television and um let's get the nation talking there's plenty of room for it there's a massive massive demand for me on radio and television coming from the general public so make sure that the company's waking up and say, yes, let's do it. Let's get the big man in and let's get Scotland talking and let's get an audience in and let's get the advertisers advertising and the sponsors sponsoring. No problem at all. Thanks for discussing with me, Scotty, says Thomas Howells. Thomas, not at all, Bach. I say you're a great man. Uh, can we phone in, says Jarvis? Yes, phone in later, Jarvis, on Skype. Scotty Dot McClure. Is it 9 p.m. sharp? It's 10 o'clock sharp did i say nine i meant 10 10 p.m jarvis uh let's have a wee song before he exits says jim stephen gibb right goodbye everybody goodbye take care everybody as you go goodbye everybody of wheat or zane or revoir and a cheerio see you all at 10 o'clock sharp tonight folks until then this is scotty McClure, the world's top broadcaster saying dinky doo